If you are watching this video, you probably are considering doing drop shipping and are wondering if it's halal or haram. Now, while I could have just given you the answer within 30 seconds, as you can see, this video is 30 minutes long, which is why I have so much more to tell you than if it's lawful or unlawful. And that's because in this video, I'm not just going to go ahead and give you the answer. I'm also going to go ahead and give you my experience as someone who did drop shipping for a year and a half. I'm going to go ahead and break down all the complexity that comes with actually making this work and all the pros and the cons. That way, if you decide to do this, at least you go into it with the right expectations. Because let's be honest, most people who are promoting dropshipping to you are just showing you the glamorous side of the business. You know, the Shopify screenshots, the watches, the cars, the trips, the Airbnbs, but they don't show you the challenges that you are going to face in order to make this work, which in return gives you a distorted version of reality. And lastly, towards the end of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the business that I have been running since 2018 and the business that I currently consult over 55 Muslim brothers like probably yourself watching this video. So if you are actually interested in learning the best beginner friendly halal online business that you can start as a beginner, please feel free to check the link in the description of this video where you'll learn more information about exactly what I do and how I can help you one on one step by step over zoom build an actual halal business that pays you every single month and that actually makes an impact by helping others. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this video. So in this video, we're going to cover six main things. And the first is going to be the fatwa that scholars have given when it comes to dropshipping. I'll also have those links in the description for you guys to be able to see for yourself and do your own research. The second thing we're going to cover is why you should not listen to me, nor 99% of the people online. Rather, you need to seek the truth. Just because you watch this video or just because you see someone online saying something is halal or something is haram, at the end of the day, you need to seek the truth. You need to do your own research and verify things before actually just taking things at face value. Whether that's me with this video or whether that is 99% of the people online. I'll show you exactly what you need to do to seek the truth. The next thing we're going to go over is my experience from doing dropshipping for one and a half years. I was able to scale my store to about 20k a month and on average I was taking home no more than $2,000. So I'll give you guys my experience, tell you exactly what I was selling, all the ups and downs that uh, I encountered and all of that. The next thing we're going to go ahead and cover is why you shouldn't get into dropshipping even if it's halal. Okay, so spoiler alert, personally, I don't think dropshipping is halal because you can't guarantee the quality of the product that will get to the customer. Unless you have the product with you, that's a different story. So let's say it is halal. Let's say you also even have the products with you. Let's say everybody in the world said that this is a halal business model to follow. I'm going to go ahead and tell you why you still shouldn't do it, or at least why I wouldn't do this again, for all the reasons we're gonna mention in this video. So make sure you continue watching. The next thing we're gonna go over is the complexity of being profitable with drop shipping. These are things that most gurus will not tell you. I know it's like the sexy business to have your own brand and buy products and sell products and never have to talk to customers and you have all these uh, revenue that you're making, but at the end of the day, there's so much more that goes to actually building a profitable drop shipping store that unfortunately most gurus online will not tell you because they have an incentive for you to buy their course. As someone who's did it for a year and a half, as someone who has worked as a marketing agency running ads for some dropshipping brands, I will show you all the complexity that actually goes into this. That way, if you are considering it, you know what to expect. Or again, if you are considering it, maybe you might see this and say, you know what? This is all new information to me. Thank God I didn't get started and waste my money. Lastly, we're going to go ahead and talk about the exact business model that I've been running since 2018. Maybe if you guys are watching this video, you're like, dude, I don't even care if drop for drop shipping or anything else. I just want to be able to make a halal income online. Well, at the end of this video, I'm going to go ahead and share with you the exact business that I have been doing since 2018 and the exact business that I can sell over 60 Muslim brothers on like yourself probably watching this video. So we'll make sure we cover that at the end. For any of you guys who are actually interested in starting to make a halal income online, online from a legitimate business that pays you every single month and actually makes an impact rather than selling things from Alibaba uh, to end consumers. Okay, so we'll go through all of that in this video. All right, so the first thing is understanding the business model. If you guys don't know exactly what dropshipping is, maybe you have a general idea, let's go ahead and break that down. Okay, the idea behind general dropshipping is that you are buying products, most likely from China, through websites like Alibaba or AliExpress, and you're selling them to people online through online shops like Shopify. So again, you're buying products from China through websites like Alibaba and AliExpress, and you are creating an online store and you're selling it to the end consumers, whether that's in the US, UK, or all over the world, really. Now, you do not own these products, nor do you have them with you in person. You are simply selling products that you don't yet own, 
and you're selling them from these third-party vendors. So these products are not in a warehouse with you. They are all the way across the world in China. Someone makes a purchase, they send the product to the customer instead of to your address. Now, to get people to buy your products, you first need to identify what's called the winning product, which is a product that people will actually be willing to buy. Once you have identified that, then you need to drive traffic to your site. So the idea, guys, of just like, oh, I want to open my own store and sell like phone cases. It's like, dude, who the heck is just going to buy a phone case? You have to find a product that people are actually willing to pull their credit card out and make the payment and actually buy it. And guess what? There's all these websites nowadays, Amazon, Team, you got all these websites. It's like, why would I buy your product from a random website? Okay, so let's say you find a winning product, something that's unique. Well, guess what? Now you got to drive traffic to the site because if people don't know your product, if people don't see your product, then they're not going to buy it. You're not going to make any money. So you need to find a winning product. And then once you do that, you drive traffic to your site to get people to buy your product. Now, you could drive traffic to your site by posting organic content, but this will most likely, you will most likely need to run paid ads to get people to actually see the product that you are advertising. Don't think that just because you make a few posts on Instagram Reels or TikTok that your post is gonna go viral and that you are going to make a lot of money. You're gonna to need to drive quality traffic to your website and most likely than not, I would say 95% of the time, you will need to run paid ads to target individuals who are interested in buying the product. So that is just kind of understanding the business model for those of you guys that are not 100% aware of exactly how that works. So the next thing is to do your own research, guys, okay? And you need to be aware of confirmation bias. So I recommend that you do your own research and not just listen to my video at face value, nor anyone else on the internet. And I say that because you need to be uh, aware of a confirmation bias, which is people's tendency to process information by looking for or interpreting information that is consistent with their existing belief. What do we mean right here? Well, when you're doing your research, don't just look for videos that confirm if this business is halal or if this business is haram. Rather seek the truth. Okay, you don't want to start a business on the wrong foot. Confirmation bias is that we, if you are looking to start this business and you're like, man, I wish this business is halal, you're going to say, is dropshipping halal? And I'm pretty sure you'll get some videos that say it is halal. Vice versa, you can type in, is dropshipping haram? And you'll get videos that say it is haram. Don't look for information that is going to give you the answer that you want. Rather seek the truth, okay? So when you're doing your research, actually seek the truth. Do it with an open mind. Don't search keywords that will tell you, yes, it's halal or yes, it's halal, because I'm pretty sure you'll find the answers for both. Rather seek the truth. And the truth is really not that hard to seek. I mean, if you really like do the work, I think within 15 minutes you can find if it's halal or haram. And I'll also have links in the description of this video, okay? Now, again, I'm not a scholar, nor do I... Uh, play one on the internet, but let me go ahead and tell you what most scholars have said. Again, links will be in the description. I'm simply giving you the references that are readily available for anyone on YouTube. Virtually every single scholar that I have seen has said that this business model is haram. And the reason behind this is because you do not own the product, nor do you have it in inventory. And you cannot ensure that this product that you are selling will get to clients exactly as advertised. So most of the scholars that I've listened to, they're actually following the Quran and Sunnah, scholars that actually understand what they're talking about, that follow the right school of thought, they say the reason that it is haram is because you do not own that product. And you can't ensure that the person that is going to buy this product will get the product as advertised. Let me just show you guys exactly what I mean here, okay? this is, I've had this experience firsthand. Kid you not, I was selling a bayat with my dropshipping store. And I know, I can remember at least five, five times where I had complaints of sisters who we're like, hey, the product that you sent me, the abaya, the Islamic dress, is a different color than what I ordered. I ordered red and it came black. I ordered black and it came red. Some will say it's a completely different design. Like, it's an abaya, but this is completely not what I ordered. Some will say this is ripped. Some will say it's missing this. Once I had a girl that said, I got a dog chain. So she got a dog chain. She ordered a abaya. And the company in China, my uh, the, the, the vendors out there who I was drop shipping this stuff from, they sent her a dog chain. Like, imagine, imagine how disrespectful that is. Now, granted, they didn't do it on purpose, but because these guys send millions of products every single month, it's not like you as a business owner who has the product with you and you're making the orders yourself, you're packaging it and you're sending it yourself. No, these are companies that are doing millions and millions of orders. So things get mixed up. And guess what? They're not like folding everything with care and, you know, they're making sure that everything is 100%. No, they're doing these things fast. You can go on YouTube right now and look at, uh, you know, China, uh, China shops or like China sweatshops or like Alibaba shops and you can see the working conditions and how these guys actually put all these things together. So this, when I realized that this is why it's haram, I was like, dude, this makes so much sense. 
Like imagine, I've had customers that she got a dog chain. She ordered an Islamic dress and she got a dog chain. So unfortunately that sucks and I can't control that because someone on the other end of the world sends the product to them. I'm just giving them the information and they send it. I can't control that they will actually send the right product, which again is why most of these scholars say that it's haram because you can't ensure that what is going to be received is going to be as advertised. And because of this, which is the doubt of selling a product that you cannot guarantee is advertised, this business model, again, these scholars say is haram. Now, there are so many other scholars, I don't know about so many, but there are some scholars that say that it is halal or it is a gray area. But personally, I think Islam is black and white and we as Muslims should always avoid that gray area so that we don't fall into that which is unlawful. So this is what most scholars say. And again, I will go ahead and leave the link in the description of this video for you to go ahead and check out those resources. Now, my experience with dropshipping, I'm going to tell you guys my experience firsthand. I'm going to tell you firsthand my experience, not from someone who's going to sell your dropshipping course, but from someone who's going to genuinely give you advice from doing this for a year and a half. So as I mentioned, I actually did dropshipping from 2016 to 2018 and I was able to scale my store to $20,000 a month. At that time, I didn't know if it was halal or haram. And I simply just wanted to make money online. Since then, I have stopped, alhamdulillah, and I have built a couple of successful businesses which generate me multiple six figures a year. Now, I rarely regret past actions because I see them as valuable learning experiences. However, with dropshipping, this was not the case. And honestly, if I can go back in time, I would not start this business because I wasted two years of my entrepreneurship journey that I could have already been building the businesses that I currently have right now. Which by the way guys, if you guys, any of you guys want to know more about that, there's going to be uh, other videos on the channel. I highly recommend you check those videos out if you're curious to see what it is I do and uh, how I could potentially help you as well. Now at the time I wasn't thinking like this back then because everyone I came across pitched me that their business idea, which is dropshipping, is the, the best business to start and that you can virtually become a millionaire overnight. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen these types of videos. And most of these people said this because they have a course to sell you. They want to show you the glamorous stuff. They want to show you the Lambo. They want to show you the, you know, uh, screenshots of their Shopify store, right? And tell you, yeah, you know, you can do this without actually telling you what goes into it, okay? You see, on paper, I was making 20K a month from dropshipping. But the reality is I was still driving Uber to make ends meet. Because after all the expenses I was taking home, no more than $2,000 due to just 10% profit margins. Now, had I started my marketing agency, which is what I run right now, had I started that during those two years, I would have been able to make more money and significantly make more progress by actually building a legitimate business that actually helps others. Again, more information will be in the description of that. So now I just wanted to go ahead and pop in here and say, if you're watching this video and you are like, you know what, I want to do this. I really want to do this. I want to work with Magid one-on-one, -on -one, have him help me make this business a reality. Then I'm going to go ahead and invite you, click the link below and book a demo call. On this demo call, we're going to go ahead and see if you're a good fit. We'll break down the program in detail and we'll give you a 90 day game plan where you and I are going to work one-on-one -on -one to build this business step by step so if you're watching this video and you're like i just want to go ahead and do this book a call with me right now using the link below or shoot me a message on instagram and inshallah ta'ala will go ahead and get you started with that said let's get back to the video so on paper i was taking home 20 grand on paper i was making 20 grand but i was taking home no more than two thousand dollars because i'm buying products which already takes 50 percent of the revenue i'm spending money on ads to drive traffic to my website i'm processing returns i'm doing the shipping i'm paying for the videos and images that i need to create to use as ads and on social media so after all of this on paper great i'm making 20 grand but in reality i was taking home no more than two thousand dollars and i was still having to drive uber while i'm doing all this imagine having a business where you're making 20 grand a month it's not even making you enough to pay the rent i think i was paying around 2500 rent at that time so you see after all the cogs, which is the cost of goods and services. These are like ad spend, shipping, content for creatives, money on Facebook ads, drop shipping courses, which I bought, and inventory. I was taking home no more than 10% on a good month. And this is the reality, guys, of drop shipping or e-commerce businesses in general. The margins are horrible. Take this from someone who is working with brands that are doing a million a month. And even these brands that are well-established, that have their own manufacturers, they're not dropshipping these things, they have their own manufacturers, even then, they're doing 20 to 30%. Margins with e-commerce businesses is not as great as other businesses. Okay, even the well-established brands that have their own um, manufacturers are still doing about 20 to 30% at best. So imagine dropshipping. And this was my experience, okay? I'm telling you guys this because if you are considering this, even after watching this video, it's better that you go into this with the right expectations. I'm not telling you not to do it, okay? I recommend you don't, but I'm not telling you, not forcing you not to do it. What I'm trying to tell you is just have the right expectations. That way you don't start and get discouraged. 
at least you get started and you understand everything that will go into actually making this work. So if you still are considering drop shipping, I want to go ahead and talk about why this is not the most ideal business to start. Okay, so let's say every single scholar in the whole entire world said that this business is hot. Let me go ahead and explain to you why this is again one of the worst business models for a beginner to start if they are looking to make money online. If your main goal is like, dude, I just want to make some money online. Okay. That's why I want to do this business. Here's why you shouldn't do it. If you are like, I'm just passionate. I love doing drop shipping. I love, you know, connecting with Chinese suppliers and buying their products and selling it to end consumers by all means do so. But if you are just looking for a way to make money online, I'm going to show you exactly why this is literally one of the worst ideas. Let's go over these things. Number one, low profit margins. Okay. So you're buying products your margins are already cut in half. So let's say you're buying a $15 product. I'll give you guys my example. I was buying a diet for about $30 and I was selling them for 60. Same thing exact here. You're buying the products for $15. Okay, how much are you gonna sell it for? You can't sell it for 100, right? You still have to be reasonable or people are not even gonna buy your product. So let's say you sell it for $30. Already right there, you have 50% margins cut off. So right off the bat, you have 50% profit margins cut off. Now let's talk about the cost to advertise each product. Remember, just because you, talk to its supplier in China and you made a website does not mean people are going to buy your product. You have to drive traffic to your website so that people can see your product and buy it. In other words, you're going to have to advertise it. Okay. So let's say the cost uh, per purchase is on average $10. So cost uh, to advertise a product, cost per purchase for every person to purchase is going to cost you about $10, which honestly is like pretty conservative. This could be much more. But let's say it costs you $10. Well, now you're down to already $5 margins. You bought the product for $15. You're selling it for $30. So you have $15 right there, minus $10 to advertise to get each person to buy a product. Now you're down to $5. Now you got to factor in the cost of everything else, the shipping, which you could probably charge the customer on the back end as well so that you can break even. Creatives. So don't think that, you know, you're just going to take the creatives that the supplier is going to give you. No, in the world that we are right now, in the landscape that we are right now, you need high like great images you're going to need type of videos that are native to let's say tiktok right really great videos that are native to tiktok yes you can go ahead and get a camera and shoot this yourself you know you don't have to spend money on that but the whole point is there's a potential for you to spend money here as well you need to invest in this as well whether it's your money or your time so creatives and images influencer marketing and ugc i don't know about you but if i was starting a drop shipping business i would definitely do ugc user generated content where i'm paying other people to record videos of them unboxing the videos, giving their reviews, so on and so forth, which will give me really great assets that I can use in marketing. And then anything else that is needed to sell the product. So you see, you're already down to $5 profit and we haven't even factored in all these. So the first reason why you should not start a dropshipping business, even if it is halal, is because again, the low profit margins. Again, take this from someone who not only has the dropshipping, but has worked with companies who literally were generating them profit like they're actually making money from the ads that they're running but even then they're still not making money because of all of the things that go into running an e-commerce store in this case specifically a drop shipping store so that's the low profit margins let's talk about the complexity which is finding a winning product again just because you can sell a product from a supplier does not mean people will actually want to buy it i have tested seven products before finding the winning product which in this case was a diet Islamic dresses for women. All this costed me money that I was spending on my website and more importantly on ad spend to see if people are actually going to buy these products. So just because you can sell a product does not mean people are going to buy it. You have to find a product, make a website around it, spend money on ads to drive traffic to that site, see if people will buy it. If they do, then you can go ahead and scale. If they don't, then you got to go back to the drawing board and find a different product. And I did this seven times before finding if finally that winning product. Simply put, 95% of any product that you sell can easily be found either on Amazon or Timu. So if you don't have a unique product or it's not advertised in a way which will get people to impulsively buy it, then you simply then they simply will just go to Amazon or Timu and buy it from there. Sometimes you really just have to ask yourself, okay? Why would people buy my product? Why would people buy my services, right? You know, as someone who's been in business and runs a marketing agency and a consulting agency, I always ask myself, why would people work with me? What makes me unique? What makes me different? Why can't they go to the next guy? And it's the same thing you want to ask yourself here. Why would someone buy your product from a random website versus going to Amazon or going to Timu? <laughs> Timu right now, you can literally go on there and buy things for pennies, right, from China. So why would they buy from you versus uh, from Amazon or Timu? You have to ask yourself that. Okay, so again, if you don't have a unique product, and if your product is not advertised in, in a unique way, and it gets people to literally impulsively 
pull up their credit card and buy it, then they can simply just go to these websites. And how do you create a, how do you have a winning product? How do you advertise it in a unique way? Well, it's going back to what I was saying here, UGC content and having creative images. That's what's going to get to, you know, get you to sell your products. And guess what? This is also money that you would need to spend on um, getting these type of creatives or you simply do it yourself. So this is the level of complexity, guys, okay? Understand that it's not as simple as just finding a product and then selling it, right? All of these things are a factor. So the next thing when it comes to the level of complexity is going to be advertising the products, okay? Now, one of the most complicated things you'll face with drop shipping is driving quality traffic to your website. If you don't know how to run ads or if you don't have someone who knows how to do so, it's going to be hard for you to drive traffic to your website. More importantly, you want to drive traffic of people who are actually willing to buy your product. You don't want to just drive any traffic. You want to drive quality traffic of your ICP ideal customer profile who will actually buy that product. Now, hiring someone who can drive traffic to your website is very easy, but again, it's going to cost you money and you'll need to that you'll need to spend on top of what you're already spending on ads, which again is another level of complexity that comes with drop shipping. So, simply put, just because you can buy a product and build a website around it. it does not mean people are going to buy it. You have to drive quality traffic to that website. If you don't know how to run Facebook ads or ads in general, you're going to have to hire someone. And again, that is another fee that you will have to pay them on top of the money that you will be spending on ads on Facebook or whatever platform you're advertising on. The next level of complexity is going to be the marketing collateral. So again, as someone who has been running an agency since 2018 and has generated well over $30 million in revenue for my clients, I can tell you that one of the most important factors that will get people to buy is the creatives. It's not even the targeting no more. When we're running ads nowadays for a lot of the brands that we work with, even for my own business, we just keep it broad and we let the creative do the targeting because Facebook has gotten so smart to the point where it knows who is who. So if you put together the right creative with the right message that calls out the right people and highlights the problem and pain points that they have, those people will engage with that ad or they'll show interest and then Facebook starts showing that product to more people. So right now, one of the most important variables, actually the most important variable is creatives. If you do not have your creatives on point, forget about it. You have to have your creatives on point. So if you don't have captivating images and videos that will get people to buy, it will be hard for you to sell your product and you're only going to waste money on ads due to poor creatives. If you don't have the creatives in place, dude, save your money. Don't even do the ads, okay? Because I'm telling you right now, the creative is going to be one of the most, actually the most important thing when it comes to actually running these ads. Now, I've worked with uh, influencers and UGC creators and we've paid them anywhere from $500 all the way to $5,000 per video in order for them to create captivating videos for us to use in our marketing. So while I'm working with these e-commerce brands, we have worked with influencers and creators where our clients paid them anywhere from $50 all the way to $5,000 per video. So this can actually get really costly depending on if you're doing influencer marketing or you just see, uh, working with UGC creators, how many videos they're recording for you, so on and so forth. Now, this doesn't even include having a proper website setup that is optimized for CRO, which is conversion rate optimization. You need to make sure your website is optimized for conversions. And these guys are the things that gurus don't tell you when they're pitching you their dropshipping course. I think you guys are smart enough at this point to understand that most people online that are putting out this kind of information uh, essentially have an ulterior motive then should just give you the information and look that's fine it's okay to sell courses it's okay to make videos and give value to people to eventually sell the course what's what i don't believe is okay is to not give people all the information that they need to know before buying your course or before investing in what it is that you have i'm making these videos to provide you guys value but i have a mar i have a consulting agency where I teach people like yourself how to start their own business. And it's because I give you guys all this information, I allow you guys to make a decision if you guys want to start a business and join our consulting agency where you can work with me one-on-one -on -one and have me help you build your business. So there's nothing wrong with putting out content like this. What I have an issue with is people that put out content, but they don't tell you everything that you can expect when starting with this business. That's where the issue is. And I genuinely think that most of these gurus who have to sell you this course are not going to tell you all of these issues. Like over here, I'm giving you all the problems with dropshipping, right? That way you know exactly what to expect should you decide to go ahead and do it. So there's no issue with selling courses or making such videos. Now, I don't sell courses. I do consulting. But what I'm saying is these people that are selling you these courses on dropshipping specifically, I just think that it would be better if you guys would understand everything that goes into actually making this work rather than selling you on the stream and then you get started and you're like, I didn't know it, all of these factors 
are in play in order to make this work. Which leads us to what do you need to actually make it work? Okay, because again, it's not, I'm not saying that it, this, this won't work. Okay, I'm just telling you this is what you need to expect. So now that we've gotten all the bad out the way, let's go ahead and talk about if you were to start today, what do you need to actually make this work? So if you are still considering dropshipping after everything we have mentioned in this video, here are the four things recap that you will need to know and to expect to actually make this a reality. Number one is going to be capital. So you're going to need about $5,000 or more. And that is if you plan to actually spend enough money to properly test your creatives. The reason I say that is because it's going to be $100 a day for a minimum of seven days. So if you do that, $100 a day times 30 days, that's already $3,000. Okay? So you need a minimum of $5,000 or more to get started. If you don't have this kind of money, then dude, don't even get started, man. Save your money or go put your money and do something else with it. But you will need minimum 5 k or more. Again, this will allow you to not only test ads, but everything else uh, that we'll mention here. Number two, you're going to need proper knowledge on how to run paid ads. So either you will have the knowledge on how to run ads. And by knowledge, I don't mean like, oh, I'm going to watch a few videos and I'll figure it out. Like, no, dude, you're going to spend money on Facebook already. So you might as well do it right. So either you have the knowledge or you hire someone who knows how to do this, which again can cost you anywhere from, let's say, 300 all the way to $3,000. Really just depends. But I'm pretty sure you can get someone between three to $1,000. Um, I would recommend you hire from a uh, quote unquote third world country. Now, paid ads, it, uh, my paid ads agency, to give you guys some context, uh, we charge our e commerce clients minimum $2,500 a month plus 10% of the revenue they generate us. So let's say you were to work with my marketing agency, just for me to run your ads, you would pay 2.5K plus 10% of revenue. Obviously, you wouldn't go to a marketing agency. I'd recommend you just hire someone to do this, okay, if, again, you decide to do this. Um, but I'm just showing you the costs of what people charge myself to be able to run these ads for them. So, again, proper knowledge on how to run ads. You either do it yourself or you have someone that does it for you. The days of relying on organic posts on Instagram or TikTok to go viral and drive traffic to your store are over. If you want to sustainably grow your store, you're going to need to invest in paid advertising to attract the right clients. That is the second thing, which is proper knowledge on how to run ads. The third thing to actually make this work is going to be creative assets. So you can't rely on the creative assets that the supplier provides you. These will not work in this day and age. You will need to either create captivating creatives yourself or hire influencers or UGC creators to do this. All of this, again, which will cost you money. The creative is going to be the number one important thing when it comes to running the ads or even just your social media in general, okay? So if you think you're going to rely on the creatives that the supplier does, forget about it. You either need to record these videos and images yourself or you hire influencers or UGC creators to do this for you, which again is why we said you need minimum 5000 because you're going to need to invest some money here. And lastly, you're going to need patience. If you think that you are going to find a product, put together a basic website, make a couple of posts on Instagram or TikTok and start making money overnight, you're in for a surprise, my friend. Again, I have tested seven products and spent 7.5K on average and two months before I made my first dollar with dropshipping. You need to be patient, okay? You need to be patient and you need to keep testing these things if you decide to do dropshipping. Don't be swayed by the people you see online sharing their wins. 99% of the time, most of these people don't tell you their failures. They only share their successes. Just have the right expectations so that you don't get discouraged. Again, go to YouTube right now and search dropshipping and you will see all success stories, all how you can do it, all how you can make it. Very few people will share videos like this or videos on the struggles or the things to look out for. So don't be swayed by the distorted version of reality that people share with you on YouTube. If you're going to do this, just understand exactly what you are going to face. That way, you have the right expectations and that you are not discouraged when you face these things. So what is the conclusion? Here is my sincere advice for anyone who's thinking about starting dropshipping. Ask yourself this. Why am I doing this? Simple as that. Why am I wanting to do this? What makes me want to do this? What makes me want to start this dropshipping store? If the answer is to make money, then I recommend the alternative, which I'll go ahead and tell you about shortly. If the answer is, man, I just love it and I understand that I, I need capital and I need patience and I'm going to face trial and error, then by all means, dude, be my guest. Go ahead and do it and I wish you the best of luck because trust me, you're going to need it. If that's your goal, you're like, I just want to be the guy that says I do dropshipping. By all means, be it, man. But if your objective is to build a legitimate business that is beginner friendly, has high profit margins, actually is halal and makes an impact helping others, then what I would recommend you do is start a service-based marketing agency. 
This is the same exact business that I have been running since 2018, and it's the same business that is set to hit $690 billion by 2030. And rather than being the dropshipper that is selling the products, be the person who gets paid to get these people more sales and leads for their businesses and gets paid to do so. So rather than being the guy who is having to buy the product from China, having to put together creatives for it, having to invest all his money into this, and then hiring someone to get him more sales, why not just be that person that gets these businesses more sales? And that's exactly what I do. That's the beauty of a marketing agency is that you are helping other businesses who are having to deal with everything that comes with running the business. They are hiring you for one thing, which is to get them more leads or more sales. All you got to do is do just that. You're not buying products. You're not selling products. You're not investing money into selling your own products. You're not dealing with the customer service. No, what you are doing is you are working with people let's say e-commerce or local businesses, and you are getting them more sales and leads. You don't have to, again, worry about buying products, selling products, logistics, the creatives, or any of the things that we mentioned above. You are simply offering a service which people will pay you money for regardless of the outcome. Now, obviously, you want to make sure you get your clients great results, which is why I have recorded a definitive guide on exactly how to get started with this and how anyone can make this work even if you are a complete beginner with no marketing experience. Check out the video. It's going to be linked in the description, and it's going to be this video right here. It's one hour and 47 minutes long. I've broken this down step by step for you. There's going to be timestamps in here in the video, so I recommend you watch this video, which will break everything down for you step by step. This is the same exact business that I have been running since 2018 and is the same exact business that I currently consult over 60 Muslim brothers like yourself on. So that link to that video is going to be in the description. Again, whether you decide to do drop shipping, whether you decide to do something else, or maybe you watch this video and you realize that what I'm talking about here is the best business that one can start and you decide to get started with that. I wish you the best of luck. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa